Joining us now is Oji Okpe, with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jennings. Good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you today? How was your weekend? How was your weekend? I forgot it was a weekend. <laughs> Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, How's it going now? Doing well, thank Good. you. Good morning to you, viewers. Let's begin what's trending. In the wake of calls for presidential candidates to donate to flood victims across the country, the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party pledged donations over the weekend. Atiku donated the sum of 50 million naira to victims of flood at a popular textile market in Kanu State, where flood had destroyed several shops and over 200 million naira worth of materials, while Tinubu, on the other hand, donated 100 million naira to flood victims also in Kanu State. Tinubu announced a donation during a dinner organized in his honor by the Kano Business Community Council. Well, last week, presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, donated 5 million naira to flood victims in Bainway State. Well, a cross-section of Nigerians have shared their views on the donations. Well, let's take some reactions. Well, this is from Emmanuel, who wrote, Atiku donates 50 million to Kano. Tinubu donates 100 million to Kano. Mind you, Kano isn't among the states with high prevalence of flood. Kano must be a special bride. Everything is politics to you guys. Real reason you keep them impoverished is so they can decipher between right and wrong. Well, another tweet there goes. Tinubu donates 100 million naira to flood victims. No unnecessary fanfare. No media propaganda. No photos. Peter Obi donates 5 million, 5 loaves of bread, and 2 fishes. He rents boats, rents speakers, calls media houses and photographers, calls Faso to perform, vote wisely. Abubakar says, this is the present condition of Lagos State this evening at Abule Egba. But your holy Kasava city boy is donating 100 million in Kano for flood victim. Well, let's take a quick look at that video in Abule Egba before we come back for a discussion. This is... Uh New Okuaba. This uh, is the street behind Abimbola, Awoli Estate. You can see houses being submerged in flood, gate and fences being uh, removed and washed away by the flood because uh, because of those houses beside the canal. This is uh, New Okuaba Agegenia Abatio in Lagos, Nigeria. You can see the extent of the damages, the extent of the flood. May God help us. In the meantime, Bola Ahmed Tinubu has dismissed speculations from the opposition over the state of his health at the dinner organized in his honor by the Kano Business Community over the weekend. The APC flag bearer confirmed that he was hale and hearty, standing before the crowd while taking a swipe at those who say he cannot run for presidency owing to his purported ill health. Tinubu said that he is only competing in a presidential race and not in a wrestling match. Let's take a look. Some ignorant people have been standing before you. I can, I'm not running for 100 yards. Oh, 500 years old, do I'm running for presidency. I'm not competing for WWW wrestling. Even if I, go, if I go out there, they say, sick, I am standing before you. Do I look like a sick man? Well, Dr. Abati, this video was trending. It was the same event where he made that donation. I mean, I thought that it was uh, quite cheeky that he, you know, he talked about, he took a swipe at the opposition. But the donation has caused a lot of reactions. Okay, a number of times. We have agreed on this program that the flooding situation is horrendous, it's terrible. The humanitarian crisis that has been caused is frightening, disturbing, cause for empathy. Over 600 persons have died. Over 2 million persons have been displaced. The Nigerian Hydrological Agency and the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NEMET, both warn us that, look, it will even be worse. In 2012, we were told 
that the flooding that Nigerians experienced was the worst in history. What we're facing this year is the fact that, in fact, this year is likely to even be worse. So it's a good thing that we see politicians show interest. You said City Boy uh, contributed uh, 100, 100 million. 100 million. Okay, Mr. Peter B, who was here also, has not only uh, uh, given donations, he has also visited you know, uh, certain sites and he said he's going to continue this way. So it's good to see politicians showing interest and empathy. But the flood situation in Nigeria is not something we play politics with. It's not about politics. We should not politicize other people's mystery. That's the point that needs to be made. These are persons who are looking for votes and who will use any kind of strategy to get involved in the matter. But it should not be about politics. What is important is the human touch, is the empathy, is the identification uh, with the people. And I hope that once we get that straight, then of course, you know, we'll all be approaching the problem not from the position of manipulating the people, but identifying with the people. And I hope that beyond politicians, that other humanitarians will step in and also provide support. I raised the point earlier on that in 2012, the Jonathan administration set up a committee on flood relief and rehabilitation of victims, led by Alaji Aliko Dangote and uh, Mr. Olisa Bakoba, SAM. What happened to that committee? Was it the disbanded? Because it was supposed to be a, a standing committee out of the realization that flood had become a perennial problem in Nigeria. And those who are in charge of that agency or of that particular ad hoc committee, you know, a standing committee, they, they owe us an explanation. Because next year again, if case not taken, there will be floods. Right now, the Abu Lekba that, that you refer to, where there is uh, an issue and all that, the Ogonshun River, uh, uh, Basin Authority had said, look, there will be floods because they too are going to release water very soon. So we have not seen the end of the matter. A combination of factors, I keep insisting, because the single story is always unintelligent. It's always about a combination of uh, issues. Whatever this combination is, must be addressed. Finally, I said before now that, look, this uh, 2023 election is beginning to look like a wrestling match. <laughs> if it comes to putting these uh, uh, aspirants inside the, uh, uh, the ring for them to wrestle, maybe we will make a, a way forward there. If you don't have the muscle for it, don't go near the uh, presidency of Nigeria because a lot of hard work is required. No, it, it, it's beginning to look like a wrestling uh, competition. In fact, if it comes to arranging a boxing competition, maybe we should do it. If you can't take a punch, who is that uh, boxer that has that deadly uh, right hand? Mike Tyson. Uh, is it Mike Tyson? Yes. There's another one now. His, his punch was, <laughs> was like a bag there, of There's cement. another one. They give you a punch you fall down. We know you are out of it. Because Nigerians want a boxer. They want a wrestler. Yeah. They want somebody who can provide the energy that we need. That's what I think. You may think it's a joke, but I think... No, we really need somebody who is... We feeling. need Mike Tyson, uh, Rufai. What do you make of no, that? No, 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 but, but Dr. Abati, you know, it's not a joke. <laughs> the country is on his knees. And you see, we don't, we don't appreciate data enough. And it's because we still get by every day. The country is on his knees. So you need a president that is mentally fit and physically fit. And the true test of this is medical records. They should release their medical records. If possible, as time goes on, we should codify it in our constitution that political parties and presidential candidates should release their medical records. It's not about saying, oh, I'm okay, I'm fine. No. Health is such a big deal. I think in 1964 elections in America, Barry Goldwater was going up against Lyndon Johnson. And there was a newspaper, a magazine that ran a story about Barry Goldwater not being mentally fit to be able to be president. And a lot of people bought into that narrative, although it wasn't true, and that's where they started something called the Goldwater Rule, that is only a registered psychiatrist that can examine somebody mentally to know if they are fit for office or not, because that affected by Goldwater. But it just shows you that healthcare, health of the candidates is a really very important thing. And that's why we call on the candidates. 
release your mental health records, right? Also, release your physical health records. Let's even know what we're dealing with. You know, we can't have a president that mentally things might not be okay. He will make terrible decisions. And this decision will affect all of us. Absolutely. So we need to release full-on medical checks. It's really very important. It's not by people talking. And concerning the floods, we need to think of solutions. Now we know that majorly we failed as regards building our dams. Secondly, we know we've not done a lot as regards the ecology of Nigeria. Thirdly, we know we've not put in measures in place as regards taking care of our environment. So what do we do? Number one, we need a clear roadmap. Mm. Apart from just donations, most of their donations, and I thank all the candidates, you know, Bu Peter Obi, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Atiku, for all their donations, which mm. is a good step. But apart from that, we need a clear roadmap as regards what we will do to solve our ecological challenges. If we're going to get experts in place, Nigerians in place, also we need to be able to map our cities properly and look at even, okay, where are the floodplains? Encourage people not to build on it. It's not just government saying that, oh, people shouldn't build on it. We need to be able to take care of our environment, do the hard work. Also, going one step further, we need to integrate a rich content of, you know, flora and fauna, yeah. planting of trees and things like that. I'm sure you know that trees even act as buffers for things like that. Our topsoil is fast eroding. Almost everything is cemented. That's why you have a lot of runoff erosion, coupled with the climate change, coupled with the dam that bosses banks and things like that, that is letting out water. So we need to fix all of these things. And how do you do? We need to plan for it. All right. But kudos to all of them. Like you said, Dr. Bati, they shouldn't make it political. But our presidential candidate must please release, if they love Nigeria, release their medical records, their mental. Let's even know what's You've going on. You've always called for that. We'll take another story. Otherwise, we will ask their wives. How? <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't sure. know how you're going to do we that. Have, we, have, no. <laughs> we will ask their wives to come for a debate. All right. To come and tell us. I like that. <laughs> how are they as family men? That's a good point you raised. How are they as family? People that can't run their families want to run Nigeria. But they uh, wouldn't tell you. Yeah, well, they, all right. No, we'll take we, another story, we, we Dr. Can, we can have a debate for the wives. Come and tell us how it is this man. <laughs> You mean below the waist? No. Ah, oh, oh, gee. I didn't say so. We'll take oh, another gee. story. <laughs> Reactions have trailed the visa ban imposed on Nigerians by the United Arab Emirates Immigration Authorities over the weekend. The UAE announced the ban, adding that all submitted applications will be rejected and that the visa fees paid for the applications were non-refundable, although no reason was given for the ban. Dubai authorities declared that the ban will be in place until issues between the UAE government and the Nigerian government were resolved. The news is coming as a total of 542 stranded Nigerians were evacuated by the federal government from the UAE. The evacuees consisted of 79 males and 460 females that had been engaged in activities contrary to the laws of the United Arab Emirates, while well, the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, who officially received the returnees on behalf of the federal government, admonish them to learn from their experiences and to be law-abiding citizens. Dr. Bhatti, a quick comment from you on this okay. story. Okay, this is a quick comment. Let me mm -hmm. make it a quick comment. The thing that governs diplomatic relations is reciprocity. Every country has a right to determine egress in or out of its country, and that's the basic principle guiding visa applications. We've been on this for a while. Mm -hmm. We have been told, I think it was uh, the office of Ad Abike Dabiri that said, look, these visa applications, what the UAE has said is that Nigerians abuse the process. Two, that what they have suspended is uh, family applications, mm. right? And that many Nigerians go to the UAE, to Dubai, and they, you know, they just go against the principle of the uh, applications. That, to the best of my knowledge, is what the situation is. Second, Nigeria is not the only country that is involved. There are other countries that are also involved. Three, Nigerians see Dubai as a major uh, destination. So we've had issues with Dubai, we've had issues with Emirates uh, Airlines and all that. But to protect your own citizens, there's something in international relations, and that's the fourth one, called reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Okay, is Nigeria going to take well, that's the major question. reciprocal yes. 
action. Yes. That, for me, is a big issue. You know, the Nigerians that go to Dubai, are we also going to say, well, we too will not give visa to anybody coming from the United Arab Emirates. Okay. That's the uh, remedy, if you may use that phrase, yes. you know, that is available to Nigeria. Yeah. But, you know, Nigerians are concerned because Dubai it's a major destination for many Nigerians, yeah. particularly for tourism. And that's the point you're making, but whether Dubai should be a major destination. A lot of people are saying, well, if we had a, you know, a tourist destination in Nigeria like Dubai, you know, um, this wouldn't be happening. But what was shocking for me, Rufai, was the amount of female um, you know, returnees, 460. Hmm. That was quite shocking for that, me. So I shocking. think they also had three infants. You see, the truth is, yes, there might be a part to that. Nigeria and UAE has been having a lot of problems for over one year now. There's also talk about repatriation of funds, hmm. you know, the airlines, uh, Emirates. In fact, Emirates has threatened to pull out. You know, somebody was telling me the other day that even some of their media uh, that they do here, they've been calling back some of them and all of that. Yes, CBN might have promised, okay, we're going to give them their dollar and all of that. That might not, if CBN has not done that, let's do that. Nigerians too, if you go abroad, please be law abiding citizens. Yeah. But today I'm going to talk like a nationalist that I am. Enough of this rubbish they do in the UAE. Enough of this rubbish, honestly. And I think we need to stand up tall to them. Right. We have a lot too to fault them for. You remember number of flight agreements. Bilateral well, flight agreements yes, we that, that they were not ready to give air peace as much as they were getting here. And now this unilateral visa bans and things like that. You can't keep treating Nigerians like that. Yeah. Enough of all this rubbish. And it's time for us to call their UAE bluff. We don't go there to spend paper. We go there to spend dollars. We go there, we buy real estate. Enough of all this rubbish. And that's why we call on our leaders <laughs> too, to develop our country. Yes. To make it better. Anybody can go anywhere for holiday. Yeah. They are going to Dubai. The Nigeria can decide to go somewhere else for holidays. There are many other holiday destinations. But enough of all this rubbish by the UAE government. Enough of all this high and rubbish Absolutely. they are doing. Honestly. <laughs> no, Dubai, enough. I beg to do <laughs> Enough. I beg, I beg to do far. It's not the language of diplomacy or international law. Reciprocity. That was why That's I talked about for. reciprocity. Yeah. Where there are disagreements, the only option is dialogue. Yeah. You engage. The UAE, they made it clear that they are not giving visas to persons under the age of 40 and that they will not give visas to people, uh, to families. Okay? So the uh, uh, office of uh, Abike Dabiri, I think that's the, is it the commission for uh, yeah, diaspora, diaspora commission. Yeah, diaspora you know, persons in diaspora. She addressed the issue before now. Okay? Maybe the Minister of Foreign Affairs should also take it up. What exactly is the problem? Countries can have diplomatic uh, uh, disagreements. Mm. The only way you can resolve this is not by saying go to hell. Because Nigerians will always go to Dubai. Emirates will always want to come to Nigeria. Right? Vice versa. Mm -hmm. Okay? But we're and, calling on reciprocity, though, I think on this is, one. Uh, Dr. Still Dr. Goes to, no, Epi still, still goes to, to Dubai. Dubai. Yeah, because they're... And, and there are certain visas, categories of persons... They're going to Dubai based on the Nigerians that have visas. Now, the uh -huh. Nigerians cannot get visas. Yeah, and be, those that have submitted yeah, the can, application... No, I mean, it's unfair. Their you know, visa applications resolved. have been it can revoked. Be resolved. Their fees have been revoked. It's completely it unfair. It can be resolved diplomatically, not through emotion. Absolutely. I also don't like the fact... That these embassies, these foreign embassies, they collect our money and they just keep them. Yes, they, they don't, South they don't Africa return embassy. it. Too. South African embassy is well, owing yes, me money. money. They are calling you out. They, yes. collected, they collected my money. They, are, they did not give how me much? visa. They Dr. kept Martin my money. Tell us how much. No, Can you you, no. <laughs> if you, if you are not going to give the visa, we, return the money. Return the money. No, it's no, it's exactly very unkind. I and and, and offensive diplomacy. Dr. Bati, I get your point about diplomacy, but if you do, I've come to realize in this life. If you don't tell people off mm -hmm. and call them off, they don't change. Absolutely. There are some things like the Yoruba Oseko Bojubora. This UAE matter, enough of this, they are rubbish, truly. It yes. has gone overboard. If you don't call them out, in terms of nations of the world, you need to assert yourself. Assertion, self assertion, is also part of international diplomacy. All right. We all know the reasons today between Nigeria and England why. How uh, Nigeria had to impound the British Airways flight here. 
and England too had to make reciprocal actions. Well, it's called sovereignty. 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 It's sovereignty. But you need to assert yourself. The problem is UAE is getting overboard with all of these things about Nigeria. Honestly, they are getting overboard. And it, and I repeat, Dr. Abate, I'm sorry with due respect, enough of this rubbish enough by the UAE. Nigeria's we can't take well. it any longer. All right, let's, take, off, let's take another story. What is it? Okay. Is Nigeria we? also uh, taking money from people and not returning? That's the whole point about reciprocity. reciprocity. Yeah. Again. Every country has a sovereign right. Again. Okay? That's covered right. under the UN Charter. We should take our final story. Well, over the weekend, a video showing a young lady, Blessing Matthias, being flogged repeatedly by a lecturer and his children caused outrage on social media. Well, the lecturer, a Dr. Fred Ekbe Ayokai, who teaches at the Federal University Lafia in Nasarawa State, mobilized his children to attack Blessing because she had engaged in a fight with one of his daughters, Emanuela, whom Blessing had accused of stealing the contact of her boyfriend. Well, in the now viral video, the lecturer was seen stripping Blessing naked with a pair of scissors, while those recording the video told Blessing to apologize to Emanuela for attacking her previously. Well, Blessing was then forced to lie on the floor, topless, while the lecturer and his other children and Emanuela flogged her repeatedly as she begged for mercy. The lecturer and his children are said to have been arrested by the police. I mean, this is a very, very... Um, upsetting story for me. Um, there are a lot of angles to this story, but the main point here is that the lecturer was an adult and he mobilized his children to attack this young lady that had gone into a fisticuff with her, her mate, her fellow mate over boyfriend or whatever issue it is. But this is so, so unacceptable that this happened. I think this man should be charged to the highest degree, Dr. Abati. Well, the man's name is Dr. Fred Ekpe Ayokai. The story, as I thought I, what I saw over mm. the weekend, was that her daughter, his daughter, was assaulted by this young lady, yes. Emanuela. They were fighting over men. Yes. I don't know why uh, women should fight over men. You know, I don't know, but they, all of Why that, anyone should fight, all, really? All, all of that is in the psychology of uh, women, how emotions get, uh, you know, overboard, and two women fight over a man and all of that. But that's part of life. But nobody should be assaulted. Whether the issue at stake is uh, emotional struggle or conflict or whatever. So on both sides, there are issues. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, Emanuela has an option. She was stripped naked. She was flogged. She was No, beaten. Blessing was the one that was Her stripped name is naked. Blessing. Okay. Blessing, blessing was stripped naked, yeah, yes. Yeah, Blessing, Emanuela. It's the same name. There she you is. Know, she has a right yes. to seek redress, to go to court. Nobody should be deprived of the dignity of the human person under the law, no matter what the provocation is. Even if somebody takes your boyfriend or your husband, don't get provoked to the extent that you will, you will become violent and your family members will also get involved. Yes. It's unacceptable. Whatever the provocation may be, everybody should learn to be decent. Yes. And that word you use, decent, is my outrage here. This lecturer sat down and used a pair of scissors to rip off Blessing's top. What was the purpose of that, uh, Rufai? Obviously, he wanted to humiliate Blessing, and that's it. That's why he took his scissors and ripped off her top and tried to disgrace and denigrate her. He wanted to make Blessing feel less than human. But I'm excited that the part of the story said the police have since arrested the lecturer. You should be made to feel the full wrath of the law. I mean, there's evidence on ground as regards it, and so the law should take its course. We can't have a society where people are not decent, where people try to dehumanize another person. And he did that because Blessing is helpless. I mm -hmm. mean, if Blessing too had a retinue of bodyguards, he'll dare not try it. Absolutely. And that's the kind of country we live in. It's a country that doesn't take care of the weak. Mm -hmm. It's a country that doesn't think of people that are weak. And people try to bully other people. And that's why I've learned, you need to stand up for yourself yes. in this country. Absolutely. You need to look into people's eyes and say, no, it's wrong. Don't do it. At least let your voice be heard. Yes. Appalling story. We'll take our final story. But well, the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Songwul, on Sunday, unveiled 62 brand new fire apparatus consisting of fire trucks and support vehicles in a bid to tackle fire emergencies in the state. 
Let's take a look. Well, congratulations to Lagos and Lagosians. One way of tackling the fire situation in Nigeria, in Lagos. The other day, we saw one man with a bucket pouring water over a building. Well, hopefully, these fire trucks will resolve the issues. Well, both of you, unfortunately, we don't have much time to chat on this segment. Well, thank you both for your great analysis. Thank you. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending Today. I'll see you tomorrow.